everyone, I'm Heba and welcome back. I've got another foundation review for you guys and this one is also by Tom Ford. If you saw my last foundation review, it was the new one by Tom Ford, the Soleil Flawless Glow Foundation. I'll link that one down below for you guys if you want to check it out, but that one didn't work out very well for me. So I wanted to try this one. It's a stick foundation by Tom Ford and it's called the Traceless Foundation Stick. Yeah, the Soleil Flawless Glow Foundation, the liquid foundation, did not work very well with me. It really gave me an oily, greasy glow look, I guess you could say. But I wanted to try the stick foundation and give you my thoughts about it. The stick foundation is a unique cream foundation that creates a flawless smooth finish. I'm going to look on the website here. It is a portable multi-use soft matte. This foundation features the nourishing Tom Ford infusing complex and creates a flawless smooth finish. This portable stick achieves versatility and application for sheer, medium to full coverage. You can also use this as a concealer. It swiftly diminishes imperfections, leaving behind a soft matte finish. It's also paraben-free, gluten-free, silicone-free, sulfate-free, and talc-free, so that's pretty good. And it's also made in Canada. For a half ounce of product, this cost $87. The Flawless Glow Foundation also cost $87, and you get an ounce of product in that one. And he has another foundation can't remember what it's what it's called but that one also cost $87 so I don't know what the deal is with all of his foundations costing $87 I guess I guess that's his going rate for his foundations but it is on the very high-end pricey side it comes in 27 shades which isn't bad at all and I picked up two 7.7 .7 honey and 8.2 warm honey let me give you information about my skin. I am 51 years old, so I do have the aging skin. I have the fine lines, the wrinkles, pores, texture. I have melasma spots right here on my cheek and above my lip. I am combo oily, so I do break out with acne even now that I'm 51 years old, which shouldn't happen, but I do have breakouts. I tried this foundation for several days using different primers and a couple ways of applying this foundation and let's go ahead and get right to it. Now I did pick up two shades and the first time I tried it I just made a swatch on my face to kind of see which one would work better. This is the 7.7 .7 Honey and this is 8.2 Warm Honey. This one may be a tad dark, yeah. I think that one's going to be really dark. It has a reddish tint to it too. Yes, yeah, so I'll go with 7.7 .7 Honey. All right, now let me prime my face with the Smashbox uh, Photo Finish Primer. And also let me try the mattifying primer just to put it in my oily spots right there, just to kind of mattify it up. All right, I'm gonna use 7.7 .7 and let's go ahead. I do like the 7.7 .7 in the liquid foundation that he just came out but I return that because it is a little bit too glowy on me. I guess you could say shiny on me. But anyway, let me try the makeup sponge on this side. All right, and then using a foundation brush on this side. It does blend out very nicely. Oh, I forgot to do my forehead, didn't I? Okay, how does that look? I think there's more coverage with the uh, foundation brush. Let me add a little bit more on the sponge side. It is looking nice though. It's sitting well on my skin. Looking not bad. Oh, what do you guys think? It does look so far good and it's sitting on my skin very nice. Let me come up close so you can see. Yeah, it's not as glowy and shiny as the Soleil foundation. And it's sitting pretty nice because I have the texture right there and it's not settling in any lines so far. You can still see my melasma spots. Maybe I'll try to build it up a little bit more there. But yeah, it's looking so far good. And I do like this color better than the lighter color. but 
This one, 8.2 Warm Honey, is a little bit red for me, so this one I know is not going to work, so I'm not going to even try this one. But I will try this one for several days and see how it wears and see what I think about it. But for the first time, not bad. All right, let me put the rest of my makeup on. We'll see how this looks. All right, here is the finished look. And so far, I kind of like this foundation. It's sitting on my face very nicely. There's just something about Tom Ford foundation now that just really does sit on my face very nice. It's not settling in any pores, any fine lines. And this one is not as glowy or shiny as the Soleil foundation one. Uh, but then again, I will see how this wears throughout the day and we'll go from there. But so far, I like how this looks on my skin and the color isn't bad. I'm already starting to get a little dark from just going out and checking the mail. <laughs> but so far, it's looking pretty good. I like this. So far. Oh yeah, and I did set this with powder, with the Hourglass Setting Powder. And as you can see with the finished look, it looks pretty good. It didn't give me that oily, greasy look, that wet look as the Glow Foundation did. And it's sitting very nicely on the skin. Now I would say that it's not a full coverage foundation. It's medium at best. Had this on for four hours now and so far it's looking pretty good. It looks like my skin and it does give me a good glow, not an oily, shiny glow. But so far I do like how it's looking and how it's sitting on my skin after four hours. Another time I tried this foundation, I used the Illa Musca Primer and I used the foundation brush all over my face because I kind of like how it looks using the foundation brush comparing it to the sponge. It's sitting on my skin very nice. There's just something about the Tom Ford foundation that just, they just sit very nice on the skin. I need to put a little bit more on my nose though. But it doesn't cover very well my spots. But all right, let me finish putting the rest of my makeup on and I'll be right back. All right, here is the finished look. Not bad, it's not bad. Maybe I do need to set it with powder some more right here. But I will see how this wears throughout the day, if it gets oily, greasy, if it comes off. But after seven to eight hours, you can kind of see it coming off around my mouth and my lower jawline and kind of around my oily spots. And I did set it with powder. And in today's look, I use the Mattifying Primer by Cover Up X and also this one by Lancer, the Pore Perfecting Primer. And went ahead and used the foundation brush all over my face. And here is the finished look. You can see that it's still giving me a little bit of a glow, but not an oily glow, which I kind of like it. Even though I do have combo oily skin, it's still giving me a nice glow. Now, after using this for several days, what do I think about this foundation, the pros and cons? Well, let's start with the pros. I do like that it comes in a stick form. This is great for travel. You don't have to worry about glass breaking or foundation leaking in your makeup bag. So I do like the stick form. I do like that it gives me a glow without looking greasy. I really, I really do like that look. It does sit very nicely on the skin, just like the Soleil Flow foundation. That one sat very nice on the skin. I really liked how it sits on my skin, but it was just too oily. This one also sits very nice on the skin. I guess there's just something in his infused complex and in his ingredients that the foundation just sits very nicely on my skin. It doesn't settle in my pores. It doesn't settle in my fine lines. No matter how long I've worn, I've worn this foundation, it does give me a natural finish. It is not full coverage though. I do like the shade 7.7. .7. It matches me very well, especially in the summer. In the winter, probably not so much, but the 7.7 .7 does match me, does match me very nicely now. Now for the cons, it's not a full coverage foundation for me. It uh, really isn't. You can still see my melasma spots here and here and even on my nose. No matter how many times I build it up, you can kind of still see it. And also it's not a long wearing foundation. Probably around the seven, eight hour mark, it comes off right here and around my mouth, around my nose and forehead, pretty much my oily spots. But going back to the pros, when it does come off, you don't see where the foundation 
ends and where my skin begins. Does that make sense? Where it just kind of blends very nicely on my skin. Another con, it does transfer, but not as bad as the Soleil Glow Foundation. Here's my phone, let me get it cleaned. Is it clean enough? Let me make sure it's clean. All right, there's a clean phone right there. Let me put it up my face and talk on the phone, pretending like I'm talking on the phone. And here it is right there. It's a little bit, not as bad as the Glow Foundation. So it's not that bad of a transfer. So this one could be like in between a pro and a con. It doesn't feel tacky at all. I mean, it doesn't feel like I have foundation pretty much. So that could also be in the uh, pro column. Let me get a Kleenex here and wipe my fingers. Can't really see it. I mean, there's a little bit, but not that bad. Also, it does get a little bit shiny, again, around the seven, eight hour mark, but not that bad to where it looks oily. I mean, the Soleil Glow Foundation, that one looked oily and greasy. This one just gave me a little bit of a shine. And pretty much after seven or eight hours, that's I'm home, I'm ready to wash my makeup off my face. So that one, you know, that one doesn't bother me as much as the Soleil Glow Foundation. That one was just bad for me. And I don't like the price tag. This is a pricey, pricey foundation. Now I'm not saying for you guys to go and get this foundation for $87 because it may not be worth it for you guys because it is $87. But for me, I kind of like it. I like it a lot better than the other one. With all that being said, I think I like this foundation. I'm going to keep 7.7. .7. I'm going to return the 8.2 for sure. I'm going to return this one. But I'm going to keep the 7.7 .7 because I do like how this sits on my face. I do like that it gives me a glow. I do like that it just looks very natural and it doesn't feel heavy. Probably should have mentioned that too. It doesn't feel heavy on my face. And then this Texas heat, you know, when you're outside, you don't want to feel hot and sweaty with a thick foundation. This one feels very light on my skin. So yeah, I'm going to keep this foundation and probably use it a lot during the summer because I like the shade. I like how it sits on my skin. I like how it feels on my skin. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. And you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.